Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 40 of Around the Kingdom, a Disney Magic Kingdoms podcast by a guy who stands downwind from Pumbaa. Coming to you from Scar's Cave, I'm your host, Steve Squirrel, and returning to the show to make sure that I stay out of the elephant graveyard, I'm probably not going to do it, is the one and only a geeky chick. Hey, everyone. Thank you to each and every one of you, uh, you for joining us this week as we explore the wonderful world of Disney Magic Kingdoms. Before we get started, I want to thank our Patreons, Carrie Schumann, Kathy Clausen, Honeybee, Kira, Tom Higgins, and Patricia Baisden. Thank you, uh, and Patricia is a new Patreon, so thank you so much, Patricia, for joining the Patreon crew. Um, I'm going to be setting a goal. I'd like to get one more Patreon to join the show by the end of July. That's just one more person. If we can get one more Patreon by the end of July, at the beginning of August, we will have a giveaway for a gift card, and we'll have some sort of fun contest. We'll have a, a gift card giveaway. We just need one more Patreon, and we'll make that happen. So let that Patreon be you, uh, and then we can get some, some cool prizes, more giveaways, and fun stuff going on in the group. If you don't know what Patreon is, it's a site where you can pledge a few bucks each month to help support the show. So if you're able to and you want to help support the show, please check out our Patreon page at patreon.com backslash around the kingdom. There are other ways you can be involved with the show also. You can follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Um, we have a very active Facebook group, and it's a great way to stay in touch with me and the community of the show. We also have a brand new Discord channel where you can chat with me and other members of the community, so come and join us. There's quite a few people in there that are chatting about Disney Magic Kingdoms, about just random stuff. We were talking about Legos the other day, so join us. It's a fun community that we're starting up. Um, the links to everything will be in the show notes and can be found on the show's main Facebook page. So the kingdom is always changing, as you know. So for reference, the show is being recorded on Wednesday, July 24th at around 9 p.m. Eastern Time. All right, formalities out of the way. Let's get into the good stuff. A geeky chick, tell me a little bit about your week in the kingdom. Uh, all I did was focus on the tower. The past couple of weeks, I would like level up other people in the background. All I did was tower chat. So. Not that exciting, but now that it's over, I can start working back on. That. Yeah, sure. No, uh, it definitely it can be very busy uh, during those tower challenge times. Um, I tried to try to keep myself busy in chapter three. Um, so with the start of chapter three, I was finally able to stop leveling characters for the tower challenge, um, and so I was. I, I had told everyone last week that I had, I had Dumbo ready to go, I had Huey ready to go, but I was putting on hold until Tower Challenge characters were in a spot where I was comfortable and ready to go. So I was able to welcome them both. So Dumbo and Huey are in my kingdom now. I'm so happy to have them join me. Um, and I, I think I may have a new favorite animation. I talked about some of my favorite animations in the game. Um, one, one of them, of course, is all the dwarves washing up in the river. Um, I was talking about uh, Mowgli uh, riding on Baloo. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I love Eeyore just, you know, back floating in the river. But Dumbo flying around is so awesome. Um, I love it. There's one other animation which we'll talk about a little bit later that I think might be one of my favorites, too. While we're talking about real quick, what are some of your favorite animations? Me? I, I think I've said this before. I really like the Eeyore one. I like... Like the trick or treat when you have um, a Mickey in their Halloween costume. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Throwing candy around, and I like uh, um, which is the other? what is the one with Ariel and Prince Eric? You always see a lot of people. Oh, uh, where they're so. where they're laying down <laughs> kissing each other. Yeah, and the romance and the, and I like Mowgli where he's climbing up, where he's sitting up on the rock. I just they're using you know the extra. Sure. Yeah, awesome. Very cool. Well, let, let, if you're in the chat right now, let's, let's tell us some, some of your favorite animations. Um, okay, so that has happened. We're building upgrades. Um, I was actually able to get enough tokens to upgrade Donald's boat to level one. 
Um, my goal would be to get it to four so that it can start dropping Michael Darling ears, but that's a long way off. Um, I do recommend this attraction, though. Um, you know, a lot of people, someone had mentioned to me, like, maybe doing, it was, it was actually Allison. She said, maybe you should do an Is It Worth It segment on attractions and which to go. But we talked about this. It's, it's really, you can't say whether or not an attraction is worth it because it's so dependent on where you're at at the game, um, who you're working on, who you might be working on. Um, so that's really, you know, a very um, individual thing, which is kind of cool that they made something so individual. But of course, you can always reference the spreadsheets in the Disney Magical Kingdoms Champions group. Um, they have a great spreadsheet that shows you everything that you get for all the levels. So this way you can plan out your course. For me, um, the reason I do recommend a Donald's Boat is that um, at level two and level three, Donald's Boat drops Donald's legendary tokens. And those are a pain to get. Um, they're very long tasks, um, so Donald takes a while to welcome. Um, so if you can get Donald's boat up to even two or three, um, that would be a big help when you do get to the point with Donald. Um, so if you're newer to the game, that's a little advice I have for you. Um, leveling. So during Chapter 2, I worked on Chapter 3 characters, obviously. And after I finished welcoming the new characters, um, I worked on leveling up uh, the hyenas. Uh, that I had. I worked on, you know, obviously I welcomed Huey uh, and um, Dumbo. Um, and then I just was, was leveling up some random people just to try to get things going, um, just to kind of keep momentum in the park. My magic is so low, though. So, like, instead of just me picking, like, oh, this guy would be good, let's level him. Or this guy needs to go, I'll level him. I'm actually strategizing a bit with how much magic they cost. Like, that's how broke I am, Kiki Chang. Like, how, like, I'm like, I want to ask, how low? Like, is, I've been playing for a long, long time, and I have just one million, or is it? No, I was, I was sub 100,000 magic um, <gasps> oh. after welcoming Dumbo. <laughs> He's 750. Um, but we're just, yeah. when you, when you're consistently sending characters out, like, you don't realize, like, you know, someone like 50,000, 60,000, 40,000, so whatever you're making in a day, you're, you're, you're not making a profit. So I'm looking now, like, when I'm going through my list, I'm like, okay, this character only only needs 11,000 magic to get to the next level, as opposed to this guy who needs 80,000. So I'm going to level the 11,000 guy today. So it's a, a poor man's leveling. Um, so that's kind of what I'm doing right now. And it's a good problem. I mean, you have all high characters. It's a good You're in a good place because your characters are leveled up yeah no absolutely but but not, but it's interestingly enough like even even bunny and ducky and forky at lower levels are very expensive i mean it costs like i i just leveled oogie boogie to nine he's going to nine now and it was like eleven thousand magic but forky to like four is like sixty thousand magic or fifty thousand mm -hmm. magic or something ridiculous so um yeah it's, it's a lot of matter so so that's something to try to keep in mind too when you're leveling is if you're trying to save money, maybe try to peek around and see um, what you can do to kind of like maybe level cheaper characters. You know, that, that just might be another option for you. Um, cool. Um, what else happened? Um, well, I welcome Shenzi. We'll talk about that in a bit. Um, but it, one little note is completing the collection of hyenas earns you 16 gems. So that was a nice little bonus to grab. Um, and then I had some extra EC, so I, I was able to get Bonsai to two, um, since you needed EC to as like the currency for her, um, him. Uh, so I was able to get him to two. And not game related, but I did see the Lion King in theaters. Did you get a chance to go yet? I did. I went to go see it Tuesday. I saw it in 3D, which I, I normally don't. Yeah. So, so, okay, so two questions, because I only saw it in regular, because my daughter's quite at that, mm -hmm. that age where 3D just wouldn't quite be the, the best for her. So we went yeah. to the regular theater, and so what did you think about it? it? One, in 3D, and two, overall, what were your thoughts? Oh, I really liked the movie overall. It was really, it looked so real, the graphics, however they did that was one. Uh, the 3D, you know, the only reason we went to 3D is because, you know, it's a new movie and wherever we could get to. And I always go Tuesdays because it's discount. But yeah, I mean, it didn't really add that much. 
Yeah. Like my son, like he's kind of like he's older and he still doesn't get it. Like he'll take the glasses off, and he's like, you know, he's trying to tell. So I, I completely understand. When we when he was younger, he didn't even wear. Then you're watching them blur. So I understand. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. My daughter loved it. Um, my wife really enjoyed it. Um, I think, I mean, the, just thinking about the fact that they're not real animals, that everything is yeah. computer digitally, you know, like people are saying it's got like a live action, but it's not live. It's all computers. And the, 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 to think of all the work that people did to put into this. Um, but I mean, it was amazing. It looked, it, so... it looked so good. You would never know that these weren't real animals. Um, the, um, the humor, you know, like what I have to say is, is that I went into this movie because I, I had weird expectations for Aladdin. I'm sorry, we're getting off DMK for a second, but I had weird expectations for Aladdin. And then if you look at the end of Aladdin, it says Al Aladdin is a movie based off Disney's Aladdin, right? Yeah. So it's not the same movie. It's got the same, it's based off. So I, so the Lion King, this was, I went in with the Lion King based off the Lion King. And that's what it was. You had a lot of the same stuff. You had a lot of little spoiler, not spoilers, but um, little Easter eggs in there. But there were some parts that were a little bit different. Some of the jokes that were a little yeah. bit different. Um, so, but it was great. I loved it. Lion yeah, King. Go see it. All right. Finally, Lifetime Visitors Board, um, 82,532. I'm getting there. I'm, I'm about to break into the top 80,000. I'm super excited. Um, hopefully we can get that soon. All right. Awesome. So now we're going to go into the newcomer tip of the week. Um, this is a, I wanted to take this over for this week because I was really excited. Um, because I, I have, I had an, uh, like a, a tip that I thought was actually really good. This is a tip for all players, um, that I really feel is important, um, to think about. So, happiness, right? What's going on with happiness? They've changed the way it works. Your happiness gets lower. Um, so how do you keep your happiness up, right? So there's lots of things. You Happiness is now a strategy. Happiness before was just something you didn't think about. Happiness is now a strategy. So that being said, it goes without saying that every time your parade finishes, always watch the video. Uh, and, and get that one piece of happiness that goes without saying. But if you are going out and you're, um, you know, collecting your happiness, you know, you try to just always consistently collect that happiness. Look to see how much you have. And, you know, try to make sure that, you know, if, if you don't want to go over your 99%, right? Uh, ecstatic. So, like, don't, don't just keep clicking on happiness, um, you know, Try to save it so that you have them ready to go the next time you log on so you can click them and then, you know, maximize that. But here's what I really want to talk about is the chests. So as we, we've talked about, the chest rate seems to be a little bit um, slower than it was. So getting happiness out of chests is harder because you get less chests. So I don't open the chests right away. Since we only get maybe one or two a day, um, what I do is I make sure that I wait until after banker's hours, which is at that 8 p.m. time when things reset. I wait until after banker's hours because after banker's hours, if I open up a chest, I have a good chance, if it's brown chest, to get two happiness or one happiness, right? But then you get to watch a video. And if you watch the video, you get another bronze chest with a chance to get two more happiness. So you're doubling the amount of happiness that you can get. Um, that being said, and also you're not guaranteed that it's a bronze chest. So, you know, you don't know. But that being said, if, if I have two chests that I can open and I go to open the first chest and it's a bronze chest, I get it. I get my happiness. And also make sure, you, also, if you have 99% happiness or 80% or happiness and it's the end of the night, don't open your chest because you have the potential to get 40 happiness, you know, four smileys. So it's not a good time to open your chest unless you have like 60% or less because you can get four, right? 
So there's definitely a lot of strategy around it. So let's say I have like 50%, you know, ecstatic. I go ahead, I open my chests, uh, and there are two chests in my kingdom. I open my chest, I get two happiness. I get my bonus chest, I get two happiness. If I have another chest in my kingdom, I'm not opening it. I'm going to let it sit because I can wait until tomorrow and then have a chance to get another four happiness out of it. Because who knows? that that We don't know. That chest could be an enchantment chest. It could be something else. But if it's another bronze chest, then you're losing the potential to get a bonus chest. So that is kind of a strategy I've been using right now is kind of hold them and save them for the right time to open. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think it's a good tip. I know I've gotten to the point where I don't, I used to just go grab my chests immediately, but I've been kind of saving them up and opening them up at once. And I found that when you get more happiness, it kind of helps it in between, like when you're in between the next level of happiness, I feel like you can kind of hover there for a while. Like by the time you log back in, it's already dropped and you're just like regaining the same amount. But with your trick, it can kind of help you jump over like the platform that you can kind of fall into with the happiness. Absolutely. It, it, it can make a big difference. I mean, if you think about it, it's, you can get, it's like two extra smileys a day is a possibility. Um, yeah. and, you know, it's like getting an extra chest. You get a free chest. And before, when you were getting three bronze chests a day, like you didn't even think about it. You're like, okay, you know, I'll watch the video, get a chest, blah, 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 blah. Right? But now you're in a situation where chests are rare. It's they, they, they don't come by easy. They're, they're not something that's a, an easy commodity anymore so just the ability to get one more chest um i think is really important um it's just you know maximizing that so that is my newcomer tip of the week uh, but it's not just for newcomers that's my tip of the week for everyone um just a strategy i'm using hopefully it will help you get some more happiness because it sure makes me happy all right all right Enough of that. Let's get on into game news. You like that? Is that is that a good little? <laughs> <laughs> Got to start thinking of how I'm going to do bumpers. What's a good game news? Like people don't even know what that is anymore. People don't. Come on, come on. We're in a new generation. It's like a teletype. Okay. <laughs> As promised last week by Disney Magic Kingdoms, the price for Timon was dropped down to 5,000 EC from the 15,000 EC that it was. Um, refunds were issued to people, or the, the refunds of 10,000 EC were issued to the people who purchased Timon for 15,000 EC. So people got their refunds. Um, so um, a little gesture of goodwill by dropping the price and giving people their refunds. Um, so good to go there. Regarding Bonsai's ear tokens and not dropping from the quests. I'm sorry, did you have anything to say on that, Kiki? No, I was just saying that I was just glad that they fixed that. And I, when people were panicking, I was like, it has to be a glitch or an error, you know? And I'm just glad it was smoothly taken. Yes. Um, speaking of glitches, um, Bonsai's ear tokens were not dropping from some quests. Um, I don't, there was no real rhyme or reason. A lot of people that I saw said that they gemmed the quest and they completed it and that might have caused a bug. Um, but either way, um, Gameloft put an official statement out that we mentioned last week that they were working on the issue. Um, I had not heard of any updates um, till then, um, but uh, I'm sorry. So, sorry, my show notes must be off. So I hadn't heard any updates for a while and then just yesterday, um, or the day before, they had announced that they had fixed the bug um, and that, that this was resolved. Mm -hmm. um, so people were getting uh, issued the bonsai ears for any quest that they had completed. So a lot of people were able to go ahead and welcome bonsai. Um, I will tell you that even though bonsai was a character that you were able to use in Chapter 3, you weren't really getting bonsai past, chapter, past level 1, so you weren't really missing out yeah. on anything. So if you're thinking, well, I have to wait an extra couple of days to welcome Bonsai, you really weren't missing out on much, I promise you. Um, so there you go. If you haven't gotten your, your um, ears, uh, maybe try closing out the game or reopening the game. And if you still haven't, then definitely open up a ticket. Um, 
Okay, another big issue or thing I want to mention. Have you speaking of chests in my newcomer tip of the week? Have you noticed that collecting chests just seems to be a little bit slower? That's because something that we realized and was confirmed is that you no longer collect chests by completing activities with characters. That's right. When you used to go around and used to be clicking, doing your click, 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 tap, 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 while you're going around getting all your chests, that no longer happens. You will not be able to collect any chests, either bronze or enchantment chests, attraction chests, session chests. None of those chests will appear. Um, the only way that chests are appearing in the kingdom um, is through the spawns around the kingdom. Thoughts? I did not know that. Was it, I'm just, this is my first time hearing that. But yeah, I guess, I mean, I guess I didn't even know this, but I guess we aren't getting it, so. I kind of miss those chests. I do. I, I think that opening chests is a very fun and rewarding part of this game. When you're a game designer, um, and you're building a game, one of the things that you want to do is, is tally and, and understand what makes people happy in the game. Like, what actually brings enjoyment to people when they're playing the game. And for me, clicking and tapping on a chest and opening it and knowing that I'm going to get a reward of some, of some type made me happy. Especially now we need happiness. Bronze chests are like, sure. Bring it on. Um, you know, even just getting decorations. You know, you're like, okay, I'm getting some decorations. If you're a person who likes decorations, then great. You're getting some decorations. If you're a person that doesn't care about decorations, then great. You're getting some elixir. And they've really increased the amount of elixir that you get from decorations. So that whole feeling rewarding thing, you f it feels good, but I f it, it, there's a lot less of it. A lot less. You know, you were getting maybe three, four spawns in the kingdom every day, maybe two or three from from things. So you went from like seven to like maybe yeah. one or two a day. And that, I, I feel it. I, I definitely feel it. And um, I'm hoping that maybe they'll do some tweaking uh, to that. Even if they make the probability or the, or the percentage chance that, of, that you have to get a chest even lower by collecting characters, I still think it's a fun thing to do. It's like your character went out on their quest or their activity. I never know what to call them. Task, quest, activities. What do you call them? I say quest. Quest. So when they go on their quest, they, Donald goes to Donald's boat to do something, and then boom, he's done, and he collects a chest. It's like he found a treasure while he was there. You know? That's that's how I always interpreted it. So. Yeah, I, I feel like it's kind of like I'm in a place where I'm wondering with all the and some were good and some bad, but is it balancing out? Or are we left feeling like we're missing out? You know, we're feeling like that loss, like we're missing more than the benefit. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so that's the stuff um, for that geek chick. If you just speak a little louder, it seems like some people did not, are not hearing you. So just a little bit louder. We all want to okay. make sure we can hear you. Um, okay. Besides, a podcast is no fun when people can't hear you, right? Um, <laughs> Just look crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. And then um, one other thing to note um, is that Disney Magic Kingdoms on their Instagram page posted an earn a chance to win 250 gems contest. Um, and basically what they did is they have a treasure map out. Um, from that takes you from various places to, and also includes a Scrooge's money bin, which is coming around the corner. They said it would be available shortly after the Tower Challenge is, has finished. So now the Tower Challenge is over. So head on over to the Disney Magic Kingdom's official Instagram page for a chance to win 250 gems. It's a nice little stash of gems. Yeah. Um, all right. So we are in the midst of some awesome chest opening as our daily rewards. Today, um, we got um, a chest tomorrow, um, Friday, Saturday. Um, we'll all get the, the new chests. Sunday, we get a bronze chest. And then Monday, 
Just as a reminder, is the Wreck-It Ralph legendary chest. Battle bots, battle bots. We all love the battle bots. Yeah, looks like they're coming. Not confirmed by any means, but um, it seems to me like that's what's coming. You ready for some battle bots, Geeky? No, I'm never ready for those, but I want this building, so I'm going to try my best. Wait, when is it going to be? I think it's going to be starting starting Monday at Rope Drop. Okay, I'm fine then. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, because, you know, I'm leaving town. Ah. Yeah, there, I don't want to be. I'm not going to have any games in Disney, so that's, I should be fine. <laughs> All right. So, let's see what we got here. All right. We are now done with the game news for now. Uh, let's move on into uh, the Tower Challenge uh, and the Tower Challenge wrap up. So um, let's just very quickly um, wrap up Chapter 2 since we were in the middle of Chapter 2 uh, at the end of the last episode. Um, so um, questions for you are, did you get all of the rewards of the Chocolate Crocodile Stand? Yes, I did. You did! Woo! Did you eat a, did you eat a Chocolate Crocodile to celebrate? No, where do you get those from? I don't know, but... I don't but think we have that out here. You, you can just get, like, a chocolate-covered pretzel and pretend. Yeah, that right? would work. Uh, great. So did you get all of Shenzi's bone tokens? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Great. And then, so now, up to Chapter 1, Chapter 2, what was your overall thoughts on, on the pacing of the event? Yeah, Chapter 2, I was still feeling good <laughs> about the pacing. And yeah, I felt like I would, I don't have it in front of me all the different characters, but I felt like it was a good mix of characters. So I had a lot of good characters with good levels, and so it wasn't stressful at all. I think I finished the day or so early. So cool. Awesome. So yes, I, I did get the chalk crocodile stand. Um, was very excited about that, and all of Shenzi's post tokens, and I had a bunch left over going into chapter three. Um, so let's get right into it. Chapter three uh, is the Little Mermaid chapter, and it went from July 19th through this afternoon. Um, the featured attraction um, was the Tree of Life, um, and the Tree of Life's um, price was 5,000 EC to purchase. And then the available character to purchase with EC was Nala. Nala was available for 12,500 EC, and that is the intended price that it was meant to be. They announced that last week. Um, so uh, she was a bit pricey, uh, but I'm sure you already had her in your kingdom, right? Yeah, I already had her. So for the people that did not have Little Mermaid stuff, a premium character bundle was available. Um, you could get Prince Eric um, and enough tokens to get Prince Eric to level 3, uh, and that was $7.99 for the pack. Um, so that was an option available to people who did not have much Little Mermaid stuff. And of course, Little Mermaid chests became available uh, at the beginning of this chapter. So if people wanted to purchase some legendary chests, they could do so for the usual price of 60 gems or $9.99 for the bundle of six. Uh, let's go over the Tower Challenge characters real quick. Um, we had uh, for the Toy Story and the Lion King set, we had Jesse, Rex, Scar, Timon, and Banzai. Uh, the Lion King and Tangled set, we had Rapunzel, Maximus, Zazu, and Pumbaa. For the Toy Story and Jungle Book and the Lion King set, we had Sarge, Bahira, King Louie, and Nala. For the Little Mermaid, you basically had everybody. You had Ariel, Sebastian, Scuttle, uh, King Triton, Flounder, and Ursula. And of course, the featured character was Prince Eric. So let's talk a little bit about the challengers for uh, Chapter 3. What, what did you think about um, the... Uh, diversity of the characters. What do you think about having a Little Mermaid in there? Like, what are you, what are your thoughts on on the the tower tower challenges for this event? I still thought it was a good mix. Uh, having Toy Story and still what was it in both rounds? Like early characters, I thought that was good. So there's a better chance that you have those characters leveled up a little bit higher. Um, the Lion King and Tangled. That one's kind of. Because Tangled, what? I don't know. I don't know quite where Tangled is, but that's like Mother Gothel, right? Yeah. That's a little further in the story. So mm -hmm. 
that one I could see. I could see somebody like a beginning player, not anybody for that slot. And so that I could see that being really frustrating. And then the Little Mermaid. I don't know. Do we still consider set? And it's not the newest. No, no. The Little Mermaid was, I mean, uh, probably January or February, right? So, yeah. Pro yeah, probably like around February. So that's, that's a, so you we know. have enough time to work on that. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it was a good mix of characters. Um, I, you know, the, the you know King Louis and Bagheera are are I, I used to consider more Endgame, but at this mm -hmm. point, but at this point, I mean, I could, like Dumbo is where, where I'm looking at for like Endgame mm -hmm. type of stuff, and that was last chapter, um, so that wasn't as 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 much of a hardship um, on there, especially because Sarge was in there. And Sarge is so early, uh, and Nala. So, um, I, I mean, it was good. I mean, the Little Mermaid, I think, was fine. Um, so I didn't really have any issues with these Tower Challengers. Um, again, I really like the fact that they made this Tower Challenge all-encompassing about the Lion King. So you didn't just yes. get one, one attraction here, one attraction there, one character here, one character there from sets. You were able to acquire three characters and three attractions just from EC, and technically four. Um, you were also able to get a premium character and one through questing. So there was just a lot of awesome stuff. And then the Lion King characters were in every single Tower Challenge group. There was yeah. always a Lion King character out there. So if you had your Lion King characters maxed, um, this, this became quite easy um, for a Tower Challenge. Yeah, and I feel like we had enough, like, guessing and prediction time for people to work on Lion King if you already had those characters. Yeah. So, oh yeah, we, we did. I mean, few weeks. Yeah, the movie the movie was coming out. We all knew it was coming out. Um so so what's next then in in the Disney um arsenal? We have Maleficent next. That looks so good. So so who would that be then? That would be the um uh the the Cinderella characters? The, the Snow White characters? No, Sleeping Beauty. Sleeping Beauty characters. Yes. Sorry. It's <laughs> late. Um, so, yeah. So, they might be someone you want to start focusing on and getting leveled up because maybe it'll be a Maleficent Tower Challenge. I mean, everyone's Maleficent, but, you know, maybe it'll have something to do with that. Um, Mulan, they're now previewing um, in theaters. So, if you have the Mulan set, I would suggest starting working on them and getting them as high as you can. Um, I just... Um, I just leveled Mushu uh, today, who might not be a dragon in the new movie, but um, <laughs> so that'll be interesting if he gets a phoenix costume. Suppose he's going to be a phoenix. Uh, but anyway, um, those are things the two. Any any other big, big big name movies coming out this year? Any other live action ones that I'm that I'm missing? I can't think of any. Wait, well that's still far off. No, I can't think of any. Yeah, there, there's the Little Mermaid yeah. movie, <laughs> but that's they just cast that, so we're not looking at that till next year. Yeah. Um, so that's yeah, so I guess Mulan, Mulan, and um, and Sleeping Beauty should be your next um, focus. So um, yeah, Moana. Josh, Josh, in chat says I'm going to be focusing on Moana since they haven't been used in a Tower Challenge yet. So yeah, I think Moana's Moana's due. Um, probably sometime mm -hmm. soon as well. Uh, all right, back to the Tower Challenge. Um, the progress rewards um, at 1,000 points was 800 EC. 6,000 points was two ruby chests. 16,000 points was the Tropical Bonanza. So, I mean, that's the real prize right there, is the Tropical <laughs> Bonanza. Uh, 32,000 points is 1,600 EC. And then the big prize was the Pride Land Punch Stand. Did you get the punch in the Pride Land? I did. Yay! Awesome. Good job. How 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 far off from the end of the challenge were you? I I wound up getting it, but I got it like last night. So I was I was pushing it, you know, with the last twelve hours or so. <laughs> I got everything this morning. Yeah. After spending the last. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. Well, listen. Yeah. You, you, that's what the gems are for, right? That's what that's what you have gems for. Someone 
someone in our group said, you know, I might have to, his quote was, I might have to cheat a little bit and use some gems to, to finish this out. And I was like, it's not cheating. That is what gems are for. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not there to just like speed up like, you know, your your Winnie the Pooh needs a two hour task timer. They're there to like complete tower challenges and yeah. to do things like this, you know. So don't be afraid to like use gems or don't be ashamed to use gems. Oh, no. You know, there's some people out there that like, you know, would feel that way. I'm saying don't yeah. feel that way. Gems, that's exactly what gems are for. So... Yeah, and you know, sometimes the atmosphere in the community can cause some of that. And I say, don't let that get to you. Don't ever be ashamed because you spend money. And a lot of people got a lot of vices out there. Spending money in a game is not the worst thing. So, I mean, spending your gems that you bought or you've earned hard in the game, like you said, that's what they're there for. Yeah. So awesome. So you got the Pride Land punch again. So then the big question, of course, is did you get Bonsai? Um, no, sorry. So, so you got Bonsai, I assume, with all the Lion King quests, right? Yes. So, did you get Shenzi? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Tower challenge complete. And you and you got Ed. Yeah. You put you purchased the the Ed bundle, right? Right at the beginning. Yeah. yeah okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Tower challenge complete. Check that one off yeah. off the list. Complete. Yeah, it's a good feeling. This was a really encompassing tower challenge. There were so many facets um, and so many intricate things. This was by far the best tower challenge they've ever put out as far as content, as far as storyline, as far as um, the fun and enjoyment of actually playing. So they, they knocked it out of the park on this one. Uh, the bar is set high now. The bar for tower challenges for me was always pretty low. Bars, yeah. you, you really raised the bar. So I'm looking forward to the new content. Um, I like the uh, three characters. I like that. I like getting the character through the side. But I felt like as far as how much currency we needed, I felt like seeing the little, like, too much, like the 4,000 at the end. Like, that's what got me where I had. I had all of the tokens. But then, like, I only had, like, 25 event currency. And I logged in a lot. I mean, I'm setting the alarms, and I don't feel like I should have to in a game that should still be considered like a casual. I feel like I shouldn't have to set alarms for every two hours in order to um, progress. And, you know, I felt like there is like a big line drawn that you would have to make a choice with Nala being 12,000. I, I I couldn't imagine somebody buying all of those characters and then still collecting all the tokens and having 4,000 at the end. And I saw a lot of people who also consider themselves veteran players saying that, that getting that 4,000 at the end is what kept them from getting I, I'm a completionist and I've been in this game for so long that, you know, spending the gems or, or buying an iTunes card because this is what I like to do. But I can just see it being a little more stressful, a little more complicated where it shouldn't have been. I felt like if you got all those tokens and things, currency shouldn't have been. I don't know if we didn't get as much currency through side quests because there weren't really any side quests that much for chapter three. Um, it was like immediately asking for Shenzai after I think you did like one or two quests. And yeah. then it didn't seem like we got as much um, currency as rewards in the... Um, yeah. But... Whatever the milestone, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Uh, in that matter, I definitely thought about uh, that when I saw the when I finally got enough EC to finish the uh, fin finish off, um, mm -hmm. you know, all the tokens, and I had four thousand more to go. I was it was a little daunting. Um, yeah. You know, I didn't get Shenzi till till uh, last night either, or, or mm -hmm. yesterday afternoon. So yeah, I, I was cutting it close. But what I'll say is, I slept. Okay. Which is different for me, because the last few tower challenges, my my baby was up all night, so I was literally every two hours I was up, so I was able to like mm -hmm. almost all night go on and just at least you know get my tower challengers out and you know, get my refreshers and like you know like so I was really on it, but I was sleeping six eight hours a night now, solid and mm -hmm. and uh, I was still able. To, I mean I was pretty good with checking every two hours, 
Um, sometimes yeah. I was busy at work, so it'd be like three hours, sometimes four hours I would slip it during work time, but I was pretty good at checking every two hours, even if it was just to set, send out new challenges. Like I didn't, didn't worry about anything else. I just sent people out to tower, to the tower, to challenge the tower. And, um, I was good about it, but I was able to accomplish my goals. So I think it was well done. One thing I, I did want to point out, and I just just checked here. I, I wanted to to make sure. So the one of the big things, well, first thing that we want to talk about is, you know, be, considering EC also is that the the third token only cost five hundred EC, which is yeah. so all the tokens were considerably less than in other tower challenges, three hundred, four hundred, five hundred. Mm -hmm. Okay, but one of the things people were talking about also is that, um, for Shenzi, that the third token would actually be the one that switched to become the common token, and that the bone ears and the, or the bone face and the ears would be the two tokens that you know. Did. And people were like, "Hmm, that's that's weird. That's not what they usually do." Yes, that is exactly what they did. Um, so you can see here that is that is what they did. So I took a risk. I took a gamble today, and I spent all my extra EC. And I did it do the those two tokens and not the third token, and I made the right choice. So Shenzi is ready to level once Oogie Boogie Yay. decides to boogie his way back from level nine. So that was another interesting tidbit too, and something else they changed. Um, I like that change though. Yeah. Um, so let's see. So we talked about Bonsai. We talked about Shenzi. So that's it. So. We talked about our feeling. Any other feelings about you know the tower challenge as a whole? That you want to talk about? I am glad I finished. I like some of the change. Hope that they keep changing. Like I hope it's not this exact same because I think there are some things that could be. But I enjoyed it. I like that it was like really thin. I enjoyed that. Yeah. Oh, all right, Erica Ann. And Elliot in the chat reminded me, I don't know how I let this one go. <laughs> let it go. Frozen 2 is coming out in November. How could oh, we forget yeah. about that? And Work on your Frozen so characters. Yeah. Yes. But what could they do? Oh, um, the, oh maybe new people, right? Either, either new people that, that they can add, like they did with Toy Story. Or they could add, like, um, the... Um, the little troll guys, little, oh, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. That that are um, what um, uh, Christoph's family. They could add him. Um, they could add her parents because they love adding parents now, um, even though they're dead. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe that's a bad idea. Um, but who knows? Um, there's, I'm sure there's lots of possibilities um, for things to do. But Frozen Two, that's going to be a blockbuster. I mean, that that's your that's your mm -hmm. Christmas movie. That's that's a no joke. But no, was it last year or the year before that we had the little extra Frozen? It's gonna be like another Christmas with Frozen character. Thing, that was just that was just like a little small. That was just a little small movie. But yeah, Frozen is the winter movie. I would like to see a Beauty and the Beast Christmas theme. They just had Beauty and the Beast. They just had LeFou. So. Yeah, but. Yeah. <laughs> yeah let's see but yeah no i uh i definitely frozen absolutely frozen comfy clothes erica and, and oh, said yeah they don't have theirs yet do they no th th so i know elsa has hers does is anna in there too does anna have comfy clothes yeah she's in the movie okay then she definitely has comfy clothes i don't remember what she says though I wonder what their shirts say. Someone tell me what their shirts say. Um, I, I thought I remembered Anna's or Elsa's, but all right. So the event of the week. Let's go. Let's keep moving. The event of the week. We've had a lot of chit chat. That's why I like having you on the show. We, we, we get very <laughs> chatty here. Uh, the event of the week during tower challenges. The events are the leaderboards for points earned for sending people to challenge the tower. In chapter three, the top reward was rank one through twenty-five which is um, becoming the new standard. It used to be 1 to 10, so that's a nice change. Um, and, and for that, you get a Maleficent hat stand, 15 gems, and 3,500 magic. Uh, and as you got lower in the ranks in the bracket, you got less gems and magic. 
Um, so how did you do, um, not only in this chapter, uh, but since I haven't spoken to you on the show, um, how did you do it on the boards in all three chapters? Did you get any horns? Um, how, where did you fare? No, I, I never get the horns. I mean, I've gotten it in the past, but it's really hard. I don't like how people rank. I'm always on like these crazy boards. Like even this one, like with spinning a lot, like skipping through a lot of rounds, and I still only I rank like 290. So. Yeah, I I fell in like the the low one hundreds, uh, high two hundreds for for everything. Yeah. I um I, again I was sleeping, um and I wasn't um mm -hmm. going you know like I uh not last possibly last tower challenge if not the, no the tower challenge before that I did the tower challenge horns trifecta where I was top you know top ten I think uh, all three um, chapters. I was literally up every two hours because of my child. So <laughs> that's that's what it does. So if you're setting timers or have an infant, um, that's how you get the, the horns trifecta. But uh, I, would say, I don't even know if this is like a, a tip, but just thinking of the sleep. And you know how we always get the leaks kind of beforehand, so we know who's going to be. I would pick like whatever you know is going to be your strongest chat, and that would be the one where I you know, to choose to lose sleep or whatever right. and try to get as much currency as you can in your strongest chapter so that, you know, maybe that will offset, like, if you have a weak chapter. Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. You you need to, it, it's all about cocoa management. There's a lot of cocoa management that, that you need to do, oh. too. So, you know, the, you can't just buy that. And it's 20 gems a person. Well, you can't, you, you, you can't just buy that. No, you can only buy that pack one. But hey, but you can't buy some. But I'm gonna put that in the newcomer but tip of the I week. Need like fifth, which one? I'm adding that to to a future newcomer tip of the week. We'll talk about cocoa management. Yeah, cause that that's costly. Have me on that one. <laughs> okay. I want to talk about that because I had a, my experience. <laughs> And what I had to go through. Okay. We'll save it for the next time you're on, which is probably every other week. So we'll save that discussion for another time. Um, all right. So let's move on. Um, it's time for the Disney Dad Joke of the Week. All right. Hey, Geeky Check. Hey. What kind of vegetable do you get? When Dumbo walks through your garden. I don't know. What kind? Squash. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you get these from? <laughs> uh, this, is, this is a fun job. What can I say? <laughs> all right. Um, all right. Let's move on. Let's move on to our next segment. Is it worth it? This week, um, at the request of Allison Villa, um, we are talking about the primeval world. Um, so the primeval world is an attraction released with the Le with the Lalo and Stitch event update on the 18th of April, 2018. Um, a little bit about the ride, courtesy of the DMK Wiki. Uh, the Primeval Whirl is modeled after its namesake, namesake attraction, a spinning steel wild mouse roller coaster located in the Chester and Hester's Dinorama sub-area of Dinoland, USA. This is a land in Disney's Animal Kingdom theme park at the Walt Disney World Resort near Orlando, Florida. The attraction's theme is a cartoonish take on its sister dark ride, Dinosaur, where guests travel back in time to just minutes before the meteor believed to have caused the extinction of the dinosaurs impacts the Earth. Similarly, similarly to Ma Magic Kingdom Space Mountain, the attraction is actually two roller coasters with identical mirrored layouts. Um, so I've been there um, to, to this event. My, uh, you know, we go to Disney every year. Uh, my daughter's five, so we, we would go every year. We'd go to the safari in Animal Kingdom. Then we'd do, do like a roller coaster, like we'd, you know, switch and, and do a roller coaster. We'd go see the Lion King show. 
um, the Nemo show, and then we'd head over to Dino Land USA because it's really good for little kids. And um, yeah, th that's a fun ride over there. Um, have you been there? Will you be there? <laughs> <laughs> I will be there in you, August. I can't wait. You're going to Animal Kingdom? Yeah, we're going to go to all of them. We're going to be there for like a week. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Make sure you ride it. It's fun. Um, okay, so this ride can be purchased for 30,000 elixirs in Merlin's shop. Um, the chance uh, It has a chance to drop fairy godmother ears and Anastasia ears. The collect time is four hours. It's a 10 by 10 size, so that's like medium. Actually, it's kind of like medium to small. Um, mm -hmm. So actually, I'd say it's probably on the small side. So, uh, And it is not enchantable yet. So it is not part of those... Um, ones that you can enchant. So we don't know what the benefit will be from this attraction at some point. So, you, you check, do you have this? Yes. Okay. Do you have it out in your park right now? Yeah. You do? Okay. <laughs> Is it worth it? Um, yeah, I think, I, I feel like most attractions, this is before the upgrade, if they drop an like any tokens, I feel like it's kind of worth. That's not work. You, there's work you don't have. You know, all you have to do is collect from that, and you're doing the Merlin spell, so you're collecting. Where like characters, you have to constantly remember to send them out. Make sure you, you know what I mean. So it's like free, I guess. So I think I like like the attractions for that. You know, like even if I'm not focused on a character, if there's a ride out there, I'm constantly getting tokens character without that being my main focus. Because, you know, maybe I'm using the characters who can get their token to focus on another story. I can still kind of be working on that. Okay. But... Um, so... Uh, oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. But maybe... Elixir is a lot easier to get now than it was before. So, if this was before that update maybe I would have felt a little different because 30,000 is a lot of a little back then, you know, that'd be like, oh my gosh, you know, you'd have to make a choice. But now, I don't, you don't hear anybody complaining about Elixir. Well, so. let's not say that Elixir is just flowing out of an Elixir <laughs> river um, where people are just... Okay. <laughs> but but You, I, I saw that Twitter or whatever. Listen, and but, 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 but do you know how many legendary chests I purchased... Yeah. To, to get all those concession yeah. stands to be able to blow up all that stuff. Uh, yeah. You know, for the average Joe, which is what this segment is about, um, they're not going to be able to get that. They might be able to blow up stuff now and get two attractions from Merlin Shop as an mm -hmm. average player who's not spending a ridiculous amount of money like I did um, when I was starting out to try to get all the character collections. It also had a lot to do with if you were constantly... Um, trashing your stuff in there because me, I didn't, I had an open chest, but because I just lucked up by not always going to Merlin, so I still had a lot of stuff that I could dump in, so I benefited from waiting. Yeah, I mean, I was always dumping off um, chests. Like, someone told me this, and, and I don't know why I follow this advice, but someone told me, like, if you just do like little bits at a time, like, you know, like, do like throw like mm -hmm. 20 benches. You know, and a bunch of lamp posts or whatever in at a time. Like you don't really feel the magic hit. You know, but like when you're yeah. when when you blow up a whole bunch of stuff and it costs like three hundred thousand magic. You know, it mm -hmm. feels so. It's like to so do it that way. So that's what I kind of did with like benches and things. But I actually prior to this last time, I never ever dusted a single concession that I ever owned. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, so I was lucky in that regard. Um, but, so, so the, is it worth it question then for the average guy who, let's say, doesn't have many attractions, okay? Let's go and compare them. Um, Primeval World or Davy Jones Oregon? Oh. Davy Jones is good. Because it, no, wait, Davy Jones, it doesn't drop fabric, though. Does it doesn't it drop, drop fabric, tokens? but it, but it drops Tia tokens. Tia tokens. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, I don't know because it depends on where they're in the game. I maybe would still say because Fairy Godmother and Anastasia, that's um, early on, right? So I don't know. It is early game. So I would say like a beginner, I think that's a good one. And we've seen Fairy Godmother and Anastasia, the Cinderella characters, they're used often in power challenges and things. So. Okay. Um, but so are the uh, pirates. Okay, so let's see. Um, Primeval World or both Aladdin attractions? Um, I don't even remember. What do they do? Just Aladdin token? Yeah. No, I never felt like I, the Aladdin token ones were just that. Primeval I World or Jumpin' I... Jellyfish? Um... Gosh, I feel like this is a history quiz because not <laughs> remember like jumping, I'm like, jumping jellyfish drops Michael Darling ears. Oh, Michael Darling, well that would be a good one if you're at that point. Jumping, uh, primeval world or the Carousel of Progress. I don't have the Carousel of Progress. Yeah, that's because it stinks. Jumping jellyfish. <laughs> You know, you know what the one attract. One thing I don't actually have is and now that I'm thinking about it, because it's gone. Is, is I don't have the um, reflections of China. I never got it. Really? That never got oh, it. That was a um, a platinum. Yeah, it, was, was it? it was a platinum chest. Um, oh, and and the Western Arcade. Those are the two things I have. The platinum chest uh, items that I never got were the reflection of China, and the Western Arcade. And now they're both, I think, special items. Like when you get like the bonus um, stuff that you, you get in there as, a, as an option. So That final platinum chest that they gave us, I got the Western Arcade. But I never got the ice rink. Whatever the ice rink for a uh, Yeah, that, that ice rink eluded me for a long time. But yeah, no, so those two attractions I'm still missing. So I'm still missing some attractions. All right, we've got a long up. So is it worth it? <laughs> Um, you say yes, I say maybe. Um, I say that it's it's not bad. Um, I say that um, it's. Uh, it, it, I think that your point of where you're at in the game when you're ready to purchase um, would be a, a big uh, point to whether you take this over something else like a Davy Jones organ or a jumping jellyfish. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but or, or or even a toy alien. For example, like I would take Toy Alien probably over this. Um, well, I, I don't even know if he's in Merlin Shop, but I don't even know how Merlin Shop works anymore. But I would not take the Carousel of Progress over this. The Carousel of Progress does nothing. Um, so, all right, that's it for for is it worth it? See if anyone has anything to say on that. Uh, nope. Okay, let's move on. Well, there's also Toy Story Mania in there. Toy Story Mania is interesting because Toy Story Mania um, at, at the first enchantment level um, drops virus trackers, which are used in battle bots. Mm -hmm. So anything to help in battle bots is is a is a bonus, and and it does drop other stuff when you enchant it. Um, it didn't do anything until the enchantment things came out. Um, so Toy Story Mania was a big no, it's not worth it, but um, mm -hmm. it, it does drop good stuff when it's enchanted down. I might get that. I have 60,000 Elixir and I had the Carousel of Progress and Toy Story Mania, but I was only going to buy one because I wanted to keep some Elixir on hand just in case something new came. But I might get the Toy Story Mania with, well, we'll see what happens, but if it is BattleBot. Yeah, get, 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 well, you need to enchant it. So I would say get it. Mm -hmm. And enchant it because there's no harm. It's it's a it's a decent attraction, but you can leave the Carousel of Progress in there for now. There's there's no rush mm -hmm. on that one, by any means. But Toy Story Mania is huge, so make sure you have an area for it. My park is so trashed right now. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Feature report. Feature report. Feature report. Feature report. Okay. There you go. It's feature report time. I asked for some feature reports, and I got a lot of feedback um, the other day. So um, I, I think I got most of it, but if I missed yours, uh, please let make sure you let me know, and I will add it to next week's show. Let's start off with Jennifer. 
Um, Jennifer says, I'd like to have something that told me how long it took me to welcome a character, such as Peter Pan from the time of unlocking. I used to use screenshots on my phone to gauge it. Um, yeah, no, I think that's a great idea. Um, I actually just use my show notes <laughs> to see how long it took me. Um, but obviously, uh, everyone's not doing shows out there. Um, yeah, I mean, that would be um, like a character statistics page or something like where like, you click on it and it says like, you know, time to welcome or like date. You know, like a lot of things have like the date you acquire something, you know, like mm -hmm. it will say like, you know, date, you know, um, able to be unlocked, time unlocked, um, mm -hmm. you know, time out in the park, time home. You know, and just kind of keep stats. You know, like I'm sure that they have those numbers somewhere. So that would, that would, those, that would be interesting. So I like that idea. What do you think, Gigi? Yeah, I like that. Being able to see stats about trying to play. Like you, I usually, because people ask me, I'm like, well, let me look at my YouTube video. You know, not everybody has that type of record. So I think that would be fun. It's just, I feel like they could put a bunch of fun, like you said, just stats there. Yeah, you know, I know that they try to keep this game simple, you know, because they want it to be easy for players of all ages. And I've said that, but I've said this a hundred times, that there should be like an advanced mode up in their menu that mm -hmm. you can toggle on for people who are not six and, you know, want to have cool stats and things in the game. I think it just enhances it, makes it better. And I think that in that advanced menu, you can like have a whole bunch of different options. So it's like if you don't want to yeah. like... Go, it's like kind of like in, in, in a lot of like you like first person shooter games or um, World of Warcraft where you can like customize your UI to like m make the experience more customizable. Like I, I think that would be a great idea. Okay, um, next one. Ryan Callahan says, I'd like to be able to see all the characters for each slot during the tower challenge, even when the tower is being challenged. It would help in deciding which quest to send these characters on and help avoid sending them on long quests, only to find out that they're needed to challenge the tower, but are unavailable. I have a lot to say about this, so Geeky, let's hear what you have to say first before I ramble on. No, I agree. I think like we've mentioned something in different circumstances where you can tap on something after it's already on a quest, but I do believe we... I believe on the character... There's a little Maleficent icon, I think, on, on the character, like when you're about to send them out to do something that indicates they're useful for. Yes, but, but that icon just shows you that they're used in that chapter to, to challenge the tower. Mm -hmm. What the point of this is more of is like, let's say it's like, you know, you've already sent out two characters, right? Yeah. And then you still have two characters that you haven't sent. Mm -hmm. And then one of those characters has an eight hour, you have, you have a character in that slot that has an eight hour quest, mm -hmm. but you forgot if you sent that character out already, or if that's the character that you need in two hours, Yeah. right? That happens to me all the time. Like, oh, I don't remember. Um, mm -hmm. and there's no way to check. So I'm just going to send this character out for two hours mm -hmm. just so that when the tower challenge resets, I can then, you know, make that choice. So yeah, I'd love to be able to, like once you lock in that selection, you don't you can't go and see mm -hmm. who's been used. And I think that that would be really really beneficial. Um, even if like in that maleficent token that's on the character screen, like if you put like an X through them, you know, until mm -hmm. until they're refreshed or a cocoa symbol next to them or something to so you know that they're not available. Uh, because like you know, Daisy, I'd like I'd use her and then I'd want to send her out for twelve hours or and I or I wouldn't remember if I used her. Yeah. You know, you you're busy, you're just kind of tapping buttons a lot. So I don't want to make more spreadsheets and notes and things. And you know, you can use a refresh token on a character that is on a quest. <laughs> and then you use a refresh token and then, then you that's not I've done that before. <laughs> yeah, that's not fun. And now I have to go skip whatever thing they're doing because you don't. Yeah. <laughs> All right, from Brienne. Brienne says, um, I think it would be cool if there was a bonus magic reward when you send characters on tasks 
that increased based on the level of that character. So for characters at level 6, you get an additional 5% magic when you collect from a task. For 8, you'd get an additional 15% magic. Maybe for level 10, an additional 20% magic. Right now, leveling is good for unlocking additional quests and tasks and progressing the storyline, but and it's also good for tower challenges, but this feature would kind of give us a daily incentive to have our characters um, continuously leveled. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think that's going to mean anything that would give us more magic. I think that I agree. Leveling, you unlock additional quests, and even when before the tower, you know, what was the reason to level up characters besides just so some people just wanted to you know, once the tower challenges came out that gave you more so yeah I think that, that would make it even more yeah I mean I, I agree I feel like uh, with the changes to concession stands um, that happened over the last patch uh, I feel like there was a deliberate uh, attempt to slow down magic production um, and I feel it um, and I've even, even after my con my whole concession stand spreadsheet where I've went through and taken out all the 12 hour ones and put in two hour or four hours or six hours, I still feel like, uh, magic is a little bit slower than it used to be. Um, so anything to kind of boost that up a little bit would be a cool idea. Um, all right. Uh, Luis, uh, Luis Felipe Lerma Alvarez. That's an awesome name. All right, I'd love to see the solution for a lack of land. I think having different parks can help with the issue of having all our characters and attractions overloading our devices. Think about having our current Magic Kingdom park for all the classic Disney characters. And then, have you noticed we haven't gotten any Pixar content since the game was introduced? Well, we actually just got new Toy Story characters, but... Um, how about having a second park for all our Pixar pals? We could have Pixar Place from Disney's Hollywood Studios or Pixar Pier from Disney's California Adventure as our second park. What about a third and fourth park? About having our own Galaxy's Edge for all the Star Wars fans out there, like the one at Disney World, uh, you know, Walt Disney World, and having a superhero training camps for all the Marvel fans. So what do you think about having all these different lands? Well, I comment just first on the idea of parks. I think it would work. Uh, my husband plays some city, build it, and they add it in. First, you just have, you know, the main city, and, you know, long-time players have maxed out that space. And it was kind of like how we are. We need more space. We need more space. And so they opened up, like, a bunch of different regions, and they, they made it work. I think it's – and so since you've seen it happen, like, you know it can – and I think that – I mean, of course, you're going to have the loading. You know, you're going to have to – and I don't know how. A lot of people want the Star Wars and the Marvel characters. I think that they are all, all strong enough brands that they should just deserve a game of Yeah, I think like Star Wars Galaxy Kingdom or something would do just yeah. fine on its own. Um, yeah, no, I, 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 I hear you. I, I think that this is, I, I like, I love the idea of another kingdom. I think this is a little too much. Um, I had talked in the past about a um, uh, friend of the show um, that um, that works with me, Tom Wright, on our concepts and how we're kind of ironing out and, and working on uh, like a, an expansion to the regular kingdom that we would call like that would be Epcot um, and. So where, like, you would go and, like, you know, you could um, send characters, like, how you send characters home. Like, you'd be able to send characters to Epcot or to, you know, mm -hmm. there. And you'd be able to switch between the two. Like, you would, you'd need a loading screen. But then there would be new land. There'd be new content. There'd be new stuff. Um, so that's kind of something we're in the concept phase of. But at some point, I think they're going to get there. Um, but. Well, yeah, and I think they realized because what was it at the adventure? One of the areas that they re, then they made it better for people to build. They made it more square, and I think that that, that showed that they know that there was like some design in the kingdom already. 
and the way things were sized, the way the land is shaped. I think a new, new park would give them, like a loading screen to something new would give them opportunity to write all that. Yeah. All right. Um, so, all right. So that's it for the feature report. So thank you for joining us for that. Um, now we're going to go into uh, any questions that we have here. Um, oh, you know what? Uh, it looks like Andrea has um, one. It says, it would be nice if there was some way for me to check how many common character set tokens I've collected from my attraction en enchantments, even after I've maxed my characters in the set that are all maxed. My Mickey and friends are all level 10, so I have no clue how many red Mickey head balloons I still have or need to collect. Just curious, it should be listed in the attraction enchantment screen or something like that. I think it's a good idea. Doesn't hurt. Yeah. Okay. All right, so now we have a question um, from Elliot. Elliot says, how many tokens does Merlin collect for his gathering spell? Has the amount of tokens decreased since the update? I think I heard something that he doesn't collect as much magic, and it was more effective to tap attractions and concessions individually. Any thoughts? So this is what I'll say. As far as I understand, when Merlin collects, he collects the exact amount of whatever you would have collected if you tapped everything individually. So have you yeah. heard? Have you heard otherwise, Geeky? No, I haven't heard. And yeah. hopefully they will put that out there. Right. They, yeah. So he collects. He collects the same amount. What I'll tell you is, if you think you're getting less magic, you probably are, because concession stands that you had out there since the last patch that went from like two hour collections, like they went to like 12 hour collections. So yeah. when you wake up in the morning and you do your morning collection, it seems kind of big. Then you wait four hours, you do another one. A lot of your concession stands haven't, aren't ready to collect. You know, they're, mm -hmm. the, you're, you're, the times for collecting from stands have gone up significantly. And so that's why it feels like you're getting less magic, because you are getting less magic. They've slowed it down. Um, I highly recommend going and um, pinned to the top of the Around the Kingdom Facebook group uh, is a spreadsheet that I and several people in the kingdom have worked on um, and updated to show you all the times. And you, you can you know ch check out and see all the times for the, that are now uh, associated with each attraction. And I would recommend pulling all the attractions, all the con well, I'm sorry, I keep saying attractions, but concessions and attractions, but pulling all the concessions out of your park. Um, you know, you can click on one, remove it, and then say remove all concessions. Go into our concessions list and compare it to yours and put out the ones that make the most sense for how often you collect or, or play in the game. If you're a two-hour guy like I am, Put out all two, as many two-hour ones as you can. There's not a lot of them anymore. Then put out your four-hour ones. Then put out your six-hour ones. You know, and and then you know you're gonna get the more more bang for your buck because you'll be able to collect more often. Um, so that's that's what I think. Why it feels like you're getting less magic. As far as tokens, no. Maybe you're just collecting a little bit slower. Maybe you have less people out. Um, also. Uh, take, keep in mind that um, ecstatic used to be 10%. Now it's only, uh, ecstatic is 10%, but if you're not ecstatic, it's only 6% chance. So that lowers your probability of collection as well. So if you're at like 99% um, of the one before it and you're close to ecstatic, before you collect with Merlin, make sure you go and collect the happiness if you have it out there. Because just getting into that ecstatic tier gives you a 4% extra chance to collect. Everything I say makes sense. Did I miss anything? Geeky? I don't think so. Makes sense, right? Yeah, it makes sense. Okay. I was just rambling off at the mouth. No, but that did make sense where you were saying, like, if he's feeling less magic, that that could possibly be the reason why. Like, I felt like that was a good point. Yeah. All right. What else do we got? I think that is about it. Um, 
uh, uh, else in the Around the Community, Tom Wright, the Around the Kingdom's official concept designer, has sent me a brave concept that I am super excited about. Um, I am going to watch the movie this week with my daughter um, and to kind of prepare myself for it, um, just to get a little refresher, and then we will feature that on the show as an exclusive concept design by Tom Wright um, this uh, next week. Um, so we're really excited to have a brave concept coming. Um, so, yeah, excited for that. Um, it took me a second to realize the I thought you were like a brave concept, risky or something. Like, it is risky. Brave. Just wait till you see all the crazy stuff he put in there. And then I was like, I wonder what's so brave about this. Don't Just forget about Merida. She's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Um, all right, so let's let's get to the wrapping it up here. Um, we had one new five star rating for a total of fifty six ratings, but no new five star reviews in the USA and no international reviews this month. We did not get a, a review this entire month, so please, if you get a chance, just head on over, give us a review. Um, it really helps. Any shout outs today, Geeky Chick? Um, to the people on my YouTube community who me and gave me hope and faith that I could finish this event. I really did. So I appreciate I appreciate the encouragement. <laughs> All right, awesome. My shout out this week goes to Josh Hamilton. Josh Hamilton has been a contributor in the group for a while um, and he has been super active in the uh, chat tonight um, answering people's questions, asking questions of his own, just chatting and having a good time. So Thanks, Josh. Um, you know, you people like you are what makes this this show fun uh, to do. And of course, a big shout out to my my uh, partner in crime, a geeky chick, who's sitting right over there. Yeah, she's awesome. Um, big shout out to her. She's always an um, awesome co-host, and we're so happy to have her on. All right, so next week's show, Allison Malia. Um, it joins us once again. Talk about someone who I talk a lot with. It's going to be a big show. Um, Allison's a lot of fun to have on. Uh, and then uh, two weeks from now, um, I'm working possibly to have um, a new guest from a very popular Facebook group. I'm, I'm going to work on talking to her, see if we can get her on the show. And um, see I think it would be a fun time so stay tuned for that announcement um, if if I can work something out with her um, but in the meantime Allison is coming on next week so join us for that if you want to be more involved with the show you can follow us on Twitter at, at ATK podcast and like our Facebook page at facebook.com backslash ATK podcast here you'll find out before anyone else about breaking news that we hear information on contests and giveaways when new shows are published and of course my ramblings and photos from my day-to-day -day playing. The show's Facebook group is a great way to easily interact with me and the other fans of the show to talk about our favorite game. The link to our group will be in the show notes and can also be found on our show's main Facebook page. And if you're into email, you can write into the show. Our email address is aroundthekingdompodcast at gmail.com. Let us know what you think about the show, what's working, what's terrible, or any other topic you want to write in about. We'd love to hear from you. We're now on YouTube. If you want to watch the show and see me and my awesome guests, like this one right over here, head on over and um, subscribe to our channel, like the video, and smash the bell to get notified when a new show goes live. The link to our channel will be in the show notes. And don't forget, we now have a Discord channel, um, so make sure you join that as well um, so that you can chat about anything you want, but mostly about Disney Magic Kingdoms. If you want to help support the show, please head on over to iTunes, subscribe to the podcast, and leave us a five-star review. Doing this is quick and easy, costs you nothing, but helps us greatly to be seen by other people so they can enjoy the show also. All five-star reviews will be read at the end of each episode. Listening to the show is all we could really ask for, but if you do want to help support us in another way, please check out our Patreon page at patreon.com backslash around the kingdom. We really want to get our goal of one more Patreon for this month. So please, have that Patreon be you. Uh, and then we can do a gift card giveaway at the beginning of August. 
Um, we are over halfway towards our first main goal to help the production of the show. It's a great way to show your support for about a dollar an episode. And again, all Patreons will get a special shout out at the beginning of every episode. Again, it's patreon.com backslash around the kingdom. The link will be in the show notes. Well, thanks again for joining us this week. It's been a fun time doing episode 40. I'm Steve Squirrel for myself and a geeky chick. We hope you have a great night and we will see you all around the kingdom next week.